guys, so in this video, I'm gonna give you guys a quick tip that's really, really important for your longevity in jiu-jitsu, and it's gonna be important for you to continue to get better even if you possibly get injured. And again, if you get injured, it's, it's not a question of if, it's when, but again, in a lot of cases, this will help you continue training. And this is a little secret, if you will, that I don't see many people talk about, and even if it is talked about, a lot of people still don't value it. And so basically, let's talk about this. So with it come, when it comes to injuries, a lot of times we will have small little injuries, right? It doesn't require surgery. It doesn't require like a complete bed rest or whatever. It'll just be a little tweak there or maybe a small sprain or something, right? Something that's not too bad. But then when it comes time to rolling, again, that can be a problem because we do a sport, we do a martial art that involves pulling on the joints. And so if you've already got a, an affected shoulder, if someone starts tugging on it, it makes it worse. If you've got an affected like ankle and someone tries to ankle lock you, it's gonna be a problem. And so being able to work around these small little injuries is important because uh, you know, as you get older, I, I jokingly say this with my students, as you get older, your injuries never really leave you. They either just move around a little bit, like you, when this body part feels better, this one will start to hurt, or in some cases, you'll have a body part that is like, that's always going to be affected. So like it might feel good sometimes, and then it may feel bad other times. You may have someone that says, man, my knee's feeling bad today. <laughs> As if it's like a person who's not having a good day today. And it, it'll have good days and bad days. And it just, it's like that forever. And this is not just the jiu-jitsu thing. This is just a human's living thing in our body constantly in a state of decay. And you know, slowly getting worse and worse and worse as we get older. So we have to work around those. It's very important for your, your ability to have longevity in jiu-jitsu and your ability to get better in jiu-jitsu because of how long it takes. You have to learn how to deal with these. And one of the simplest things that you can do, and I was talking to one of my students, I'll give you some examples, is to simply let your partner know what's wrong with you. Now, I know that seems so simple and a lot of you guys are like, this is so stupid, I'm, I'm so angry I clicked this stupid video. Here's my point about this. A lot of times when people are in these situations, when they know something's jacked up, they don't allow their, they don't tell their training partner what's going on. And a lot of times it's because they either don't want to like mess up the other person's role or they'll say that they don't want to be, they, they don't want to feel like a bitch. I'm bad about this too. Like this morning I was rolling with the guys and my neck was kind of feeling a little janky. It got kind of pulled the other day and it's not bad enough to where I can't roll, but it's bad enough to where it's in the process of healing. And so if someone starts to like get a guillotine and really wrenches on my neck, I'm going to be doing that thing where you're like walking around like this, where someone says, Hey, Chewy, I have to turn because I can't twist my neck. I don't want that to happen because once I'm at this point where I'm all stiff, I can't train. And so I was tapping out, I told him, and I was like, hey, my neck's a little jacked up. And if I got caught in a guillotine or a triangle choke or someone's pulling my neck, I would just tap. That's it. And then a lot of times they would just go easier on my neck in that situation. The other day, one of my students who's coming back from a shoulder injury, I purposely went over to his training partner and was like, hey, let you know, he's, uh, he's got a, a, his shoulders a little healed up. So maybe stay away from Americanas and key locks, right? No big deal. And I, again, go through this all the time. A lot of times I'll have to actually, <laughs> as a coach, I will go up to the people rolling or even in class, I'll bring up the student and say, hey, Bob's got a bum something or other. Just stay away from this on Bob today. Go do, do a different submission. And again, everybody else appreciates it. Bob's like doesn't like it because like don't don't treat me differently or whatever but it's important because you're going to have these little injuries pop up and if you want to continue to train you've got to work around them now there's one important sort of if you will sort of a gentleman's agreement when this happens let's say that you and I are rolling and I tell you hey my knees a little janky <laughs> my knees having one of them bad days that I was talking about, right? My knees feeling janky today. No leg locks or no knee bars or whatever, right? So you may say, okay, no leg locks. Well, that in turn means for me, no leg locks. I've seen this happen where <laughs> I was at a camp and this dude was like, he told the guy, hey, my knee hurts. Don't, don't like no leg locks. And he's okay. And the dude immediately goes for a leg lock on him. And that's bad for him. Because if you're saying, hey, this is off the table for you, then you should also take it off the table for yourself as well, right? Like, so it should be both people. And so again, I share that with you. It's a very simple piece of advice that I've had to learn, especially as I've gotten older. When I was younger, I could literally throw my body up against a brick wall, bust everything up. The next day I feel fine. 
as I get older, injuries don't go away so fast. Recovery takes a lot longer. And being able to work around those injuries has been very important for me to continue getting better. And so I share that with you. It's a simple piece of advice that whether you're younger and as you get older, you can sort of keep that in mind. Or if you are a little bit older of a grappler, you can keep this in mind with your training. If something is jacked up, let your partner know to say, hey man, can you stay away from this? And just again, in turn, make sure you do the same for them so that it doesn't become kind of irritating. You know, as I said, it's, it's not good form to attack something that you've taken away from your training partner. So just an idea to share with you that I was talking about with some of my students earlier and hopefully that helps you.